This is the all new Lexus GX and historically it's been based on the Toyota Land Cruiser Prado that you see in other markets, very similar to the 4Runner. The biggest difference has been that the 4Runner has had a V6 where the GX got a V8. Now with this new one, you still get two more cylinders, but it's a turbo V6 instead of a turbo four cylinder that is in the all new 4Runners. The big question is, does this still capture that luxury off-road vibe that we've come to love with the previous generation models? That's what we're gonna find out today by taking a look outside, inside, I'm gonna show you some of the features and technology. We're gonna try and cram a bike in the back to see how usable this SUV is. And last but not least, we're gonna take it out on the road to see what it's like to drive. Do we really even need to talk about the looks? This thing is an absolute stunner, not only in photos, but now I can say firmly in person as well. It turns heads everywhere you go, particularly here in this color, which is called Earth, which is a bit of a metallic sand color. But ultimately what you're seeing here is the Overtrail Plus model. We'll get a little more into what that means mechanically on the drive, but visually you're getting revised front and rear fascias that improve approach and departure angles. You're getting a slightly different grille. You're getting 18 inch wheels that have 33 inch tires on them. As Lexus lights to point out, these are the biggest tires ever fitted to a factory Lexus. As we've already talked about, sadly gone are the days of the V8, but in its place, we're getting a twin turbo V6 engine. This is a 3.4 liter unit and it makes about 350 horsepower. It's kind of interesting in today's day and age with Toyota, a lot of their powertrains are hybrid in some way. This is a simple internal combustion engine with no hybridization. It's also worth noting that this is paired with a 10 speed transmission and the drivetrain itself is full time four wheel drive. It's not two wheel drive, then you put in four wheel drive. It's just always four wheel drive. So it's inspiring confidence at all times. And the last thing, of course, worth mentioning is the fuel economy. 15 city, 21 highway is what it's rated, although I'm averaging a lot closer to that 15 number. When we were talking about the Land Cruiser Prado and 4Runner before, one thing we left out is that the new regular Land Cruiser has now been pulled down market and is actually on the same platform as this. So now 4Runner, Land Cruiser, GX, and even Tacoma are all on this same platform. And really I bring that up because even though they're all on the same platform, Lexus has done a good job to differentiate this interior and justify that more expensive price because while this and the new Land Cruiser can be seen as very similar rivals this feels more upscale I was just in a 1958 edition Land Cruiser and admittedly that is the base one it comes with things like cloth seats this still in general feels a lot more upscale I mean you have leather trimmed appointments kind of all over really pretty much all the surfaces that you touch are leather at least a leather at type material but they're very soft and plush um, additionally just the layout of the vehicle itself with these vents they're very sleek once again giving it that luxury aspect of the off-roading piece now the infotainment is traditional Toyota which is a pretty good thing pretty easy menu structure to navigate it is a bit slow to boot up and this is something that I've continually complained about with the Toyota products you do get some physical knobs for adjusting your heat or cool uh, in terms of temperature, which is nice. And then some fixed buttons on the screen here for things like your heated seats, which once again, as I was talking about, would love to have an actual physical button for that. But the way it's laid out, it's not horrible. The car, of course, has wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Additionally, a digital gauge cluster like everyone is doing these days. But just these buttons and switches here are quite nice, especially for going into for low or locking your diff, uh, which is something worth noting that comes in the over trail editions of this vehicle, as does things like these fantastic heated and cooled seats that have a massaging function if you get the over trail plus model. In terms of the second row seats, you do 
get a good amount of room back there. I'm 6'1", and I have plenty of headroom. And even with this seat all the way back and the easy entry option that kind of lets you get in with plenty of room, I still have room back there for my knees as well. So it's a nice place to be. The Overtrail Plus gets things like these shades on the back windows as well. Now, we've summed up the interior. Let's go ahead and attempt to throw a bike in the back to see how usable that rear hatch is. Before we throw a bike in the back of the GX, it's worth mentioning some differences with the new Land Cruiser being that they share the same platform. In terms of storage, the big difference here is the Land Cruiser stores its hybrid battery under the back carpet. So you can see here in this video how much the floor is raised in the Land Cruiser versus the GX. Of course, since the GX is not a hybrid, it doesn't have that higher load floor. Otherwise, the folding of the seats provides a lot of options for fitting your larger items. The lift back is also wide enough to have no problems fitting my extra large frame 29er mountain bike. As always, if you enjoy the bike test, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss future content. Let's go for a ride where the pavement ends in the GX550, figure out what this car does really well, and also how it compares to some of its siblings that it ultimately competes with, like the Land Cruiser. So first and foremost, there are a couple things that make this worth, to me, more money than the Land Cruiser. Of course, we've already talked about the engine, and we'll talk a little bit more about it here in a minute as we kind of do some pulls. But the more underrated aspect of this vehicle, and the reason in my eyes that you spend the extra money for this GX, is for the suspension. You have an active suspension with this GX, and more specifically, you also get EKDSS with this Overtrail model. So what is EKDSS? Well, it's basically the ability for the vehicle to disconnect the sway bars at will. You have disconnecting front disconnecting sway bars in things like the Land Cruiser and the Tacoma, but EKDSS essentially does that for you. So it's, it's more of like a turnkey, just figures it out for you. And while I did do a little bit of off-roading in this thing, nothing too crazy, it is incredible how good this is at just being a luxury off-roader. That EKDSS by disconnecting the sway bars, you get more articulation. It also prevents head toss. If you're going over a lot of ruts and uneven surfaces uh, with the stabilizer bars, you know, it's gonna throw you back and forth. Well, with EKDSS, it really minimizes that. So it's a fantastic system off-road. Now, how about on-road? And that's really, to me, where this car shines because it has off-road chops, nothing crazy, but it doesn't sacrifice anything on road. In fact, you'd be hard pressed to really even know that this is a body on frame vehicle most of the time that you're driving it. And that's one of the nicest things that you can say about any body on frame vehicles because they do have some weaknesses, especially over bumps, mid corner, and you will feel that in this, but it's so minuscule compared to most other body on frame vehicles. The adaptive suspension allows you to, with this mode select, choose between sport, comfort, normal, sport plus. And when I was on a very twisty, very smooth, you know, faster road earlier, I had it in the sport mode just to see kind of what it feels like. It definitely firms up those dampers and ultimately you get less body roll, allows you to kind of carry more speed in turns. But you know, who's doing that in the GX? This is a luxury off-road SUV. And I've really just kept it in the comfort setting because it's so good at soaking up bumps, allows you just to be very, very chill while driving because it's able to, uh, it's capable of dealing with really any road surface. So that's really what I like about it. We kind of touched on what the Overtrail gets you in terms of that EKDSS, it also gets you these this multi uh, excuse me. It also gets you this multi train select, which basically you know if you're on sand, if you're in deep snow, if you're off road, it's going to vary the traction control 
and of course the suspension and throttle, all these things to get you the optimal performance. So that's another nice thing to have. Of course, the looks of the Overtrail look awesome. You're getting uh, also more protection underneath. So you're getting skid trays uh, to protect those vital underbody bits. And this one has rock sliders as, a, as an option. That's not standard on the Overtrail, but it is an option obviously for somebody who is very serious about off-roading. And once again, going back to that off-roading piece, this is a vehicle for somebody who will only go off-roading every now and then. It is extremely capable off-road, but I just can't ex imagine spending $80,000 and then instantly going and taking this on some like hardcore off-road uh, trail. This to me is for somebody who just you know lives like most other people, drives to and from work, wants something comfortable, doesn't compromise, and then occasionally maybe does a little off-roading, maybe drives on a dirt road to go do some hiking or something like that. This is the way to do that in luxury. Now this engine, oh yeah, lots of power, almost 500 pound-feet of torque from this bad boy. 350 horsepower. It is the second biggest differentiator compared to the Land Cruiser. Of course, the Land Cruiser is getting that four cylinder, as is the Forerunner, as is the Tacoma. And while it is objectively good in terms of power output, you know, the electric motor has good torque down low while the turbo spools up, uh, that engine really just sounds horrible. It sounds like a weed eater. And this, while it doesn't have like a great exhaust tone or intake tone or anything like that, it's very smooth and it's also um, just a lot more refined. So in terms of a refined driving experience, we're gonna spend a lot of money and expect a luxury experience. That's really where this engine shines. And in terms of comparing this to the old V8, of course, nothing really replaces the sound of that outgoing V8, but this engine has more power and torque and gets better fuel economy, and it feels way faster. So objectively, it's hard to argue with more power and better fuel economy. That said, longevity is a whole other question, and we simply don't know how this engine will hold up long-term just yet. The other thing worth noting is these new Tacomas, have had a fair amount of issues with these transmissions, the eight-speed transmissions. This gets the 10-speed. This is essentially the Tundra powertrain, right? So you get the 3.4 liter twin turbo that's in the Tundra. You also get the 10-speed transmission that's in the Tundra. So this is more robust. Um, so, you know, hopefully you're not gonna have the same transmission issues as they seem to be having with that eight-speed. Uh, of course, this can tow more as well. This can tow like 8,000 pounds compared to the 6,000 pounds that the Land Cruiser tows. So you are not only paying for more, um, but you're getting more here. Uh, and, and I think that's, that's really the end of the day. What are the downsides with the GX? Well, frankly, there aren't many. It's mostly the price, we'll touch on that, but the only downside I've really experienced with this vehicle is the wind noise on the highway. It's a pretty, well insulated vehicle. There's not a lot of road noise, even from these all-terrain tires uh, in terms of tire noise, but the wind noise when you're above 75 is noticeable. Um, and you just can't get around physics, right? That's, that's the end of the day what this is about. This is a very boxy shaped vehicle and thus there is going to be wind noise. You know, that's really the biggest complaint. Everything else I have to complain about is monetarily motivated. The fuel economy is bad. I'm getting 16.8 miles to the gallon over this tank. Uh, I've done a little over 200 miles. I've done a fair bit of driving on the highway, so I should be getting a lot better fuel economy, and I'm just not. So the fuel economy is very bad, and then of course, just the overall price of this vehicle. It is not cheap. Uh, this one is spec to over $80,000. Um, if you want a regular over trail you can get that down closer to 70 uh, but that's that's a lot of change and ultimately luxury is never a value proposition and i've said that before so realistically you have to be ready to pay for that kind of thing and i will back up here i guess so 
the price of the vehicle I think is a bit cost prohibitive but as I mentioned if you are somebody who values your on-road driving you value your comfort and luxuries you will occasionally go off-road it's just such a good one because you don't have to compromise like a Bronco or a Jeep on road that just has bad steering, uh, you know, maybe a bad ride as well. This thing gives you all those on road things, but is also capable of doing plenty of what most people would be doing off road. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I really, really, really like this thing. Uh, if you got money to blow, uh, you know, once again, luxury items, not cheap. It's a pretty cool thing. And also, as I've already talked about, it looks fantastic. Everyone that I've showed it absolutely loves the look of it. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you made it this far in the video. Thank you very much. Consider hitting that subscribe button and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.